Okay, so I see uh, lots of you are now joining uh, this webinar. Um, I'll give it another couple of minutes before I actually start to let everybody get in. Um, you can see that um, I've got a slide up which has my name, it also has our email address and our Twitter handle. So if you want to make a note of those, you can. Okay, we're almost at 400 people um, logging in. Okay, we seem to be stabilizing at uh, just under 400. So I'm going to take that as probably being most people in. Um, what my plan is, is to basically talk about STEP for about half an hour. Um, and then at the end, I'm going to take questions, but you can um, ask questions at any time. Um, there's a question and answer uh, section on Zoom. If you type a question in there, then one of our moderators uh, we'll either reply it or we'll save it for the end of the session. Um, as I've already said, my name is Claire Metcalf. I work on something called the STEP Support Programme. Um, if you haven't yet uh, looked at the STEP Support Programme, um, I suggest you do have a good search through there. I will be talking a bit about it during this talk as well. Uh, the website address for it is down at the bottom. It's maths.org slash step. It's fairly easy to remember. And we also have an email address. So if you want to email us, it's step at maths.org. So you might notice it's just the permutation of the website address. Uh, we also have a Twitter handle. Um, I couldn't find um, a, an official Twitter icon to use. So I've used this nice little rubber duck. Um, the Twitter handle is at step support cam. And if you follow us on Twitter, then you'll hear any announcements about new things we've done or reminders about things that you might need to do for your step preparation. Um, I can see a few questions coming in already, which is wonderful. So please type in any questions that you want to into the um, uh, chat, the question and answer section. Um, and either one of our moderators will answer it or ans answer it at the end. Right, we are just two people below um, 400. So I think I'm going to start. Okay, the first thing I'm going to talk about is what is STEP. So STEP actually stands for Sixth Term Examination Paper, which really means we shouldn't talk about STEP papers. Uh, we should talk about steps, um, but I, everyone tends to talk about STEP papers anyway, because STEP sounds like a rather defunct pop group. Um, it's part of Cambridge University Offers for Maths, and there's a few other uh, subjects that might ask you to sit a step paper. So um, a couple of colleges for engineering or um, uh, computer science might ask you to sit a step exam. If you want to apply to do maths at Cambridge, you will be asked to sit step. There's a few other universities that either require step or recommend that you take it. So um, some examples are Imperial. If you apply to Imperial after the MAT, which is the Oxford Mathematics Admissions Test deadline, then they will ask you to sit step. Um, other colleges like Warwick will use step as part of a range of offers. So if you get a good grade in step, then you can do slightly less well in one of your A-levels. Um, there are about eight universities altogether that will look at STEP and might give you a reduced offer if you actually take STEP. Um, and some other universities um, suggest that working through STEP papers, even if you don't sit the exam, is really good preparation for um, doing maths at university. There are three papers. Um, we are now using um, the numbers one, two and three rather than the Roman numerals. Um, they are step one, step two and step three. They are supposed to be getting slightly harder in content and they also cover more material. So step one is based on A-level maths with a couple of extra bits added in. Step two is based on A-level maths and the AS further maths core. And step three is based on A-level maths and A-level further maths. There are 11 or 12 questions in each paper. Uh, step one has eight pure questions two mechanics question and one probability and statistics question. 
Um, that's not because we don't like statistics and probability, it's just in the A-level specifications, there is very little statistics and probability that we can ask you to do in the step paper. Um, you're not allowed calculators in step. We can't ask you questions on the big data set or anything like that. So there tends to be one question on probability in step one, um, not so much statistics at this point. In step two and step three, um, there are eight pure questions. Um, two mechanics questions and two statistics questions. Um, each step paper is three hours long. Um, this is quite challenging if you've never sat through a three hour exam before, um, but you'll find that um, as you get used to it, the time tends to go quite quickly. Uh, you're allowed to attempt as many as those 11 or 12 questions as you like. Uh, your mark will be based on the six best solutions. So if you answer um, 12 questions, which we do not recommend, all of your 12 questions will be marked, and then the six best of them will go forward to make up your final grade. Um, there are four grades. Uh, the top grade is S. Um, I think it stands for superhuman, because it is really very, very good. Um, but I believe that actually uh, S becomes from scholarship, because what step replaced was the old Cambridge scholarship exams. The other grades in decreasing order, so it's the opposite to GCSEs, uh, one, two, and three, and then U. So S is the highest, followed by one, followed by two, followed by unclassified. Um, so why do we ask um, people who want to do maths at Cambridge to sit step? Um, there's a few different reasons. Uh, first of all, it's a really good preparation for a demanding um, degree course. Uh, for a lot of people, STEP is the first time that they have found maths really difficult. Um, you might make um, careless algebraic mistakes, but most of the time in your A-levels, you probably know more or less what is going on. With STEP, you'll face questions where you don't know what to do straight away. Um, you don't know uh, quite what, what everything that you're going to need to do this question. Um, and it's that sort of problem solving skills which are really useful when you do maths at university. Um, just going back to that point, that is why so many universities say that even if you don't sit the paper, it's a really good idea to do some step papers to get you um, practice ready for your university degree. Um, another reason is that the papers are available to the colleges. Um, every year, about a third of our um, students who are accepted did not actually meet their step offer. If they are close to their step offer, the colleges can actually have a look at the papers and see how you approach the questions. And it gives us a bit more of a um, fine detail um, approach to admissions. Um, it might be that you knew what you were doing, you did lots of um, correct things, uh, but you made some mistakes, you lost minor signs, and that just drops you a few marks and just took you underneath the gray boundary. And we can look at your paper and say, well, you knew what you're doing, you made some silly mistakes, but we're going to give you a place anyway. Um, and the third reason we do it is uh, basically as a selection tool. So to give you an idea of numbers, uh, in 2018, I couldn't find 2019 figures uh, yet, so I'm still on 2018 here, there were over 4,000 students who achieved an A star in A-level further maths and we assume that they've probably got an A star in single maths as well. Um, that's just people doing A levels. You also have lots of extremely good students doing IB, um, doing other sorts of courses in other countries. So that's an awful lot of extremely good mathematicians who, as far as A levels are concerned, are getting the best grades they possibly can. Taking maths at Cambridge, we have 250 places. So what we need to try and do is we need to try and work out out of this large pool of extremely talented mathematicians who are the extremely, extremely talented mathematicians. Okay, um, how do we use STEP? So we use STEP in a couple of ways. Um, as I said, we've used it for, as an admissions tool. Uh, to give you an idea of some sort of numbers, um, if we look at the years 2015 to 2018, uh, on average, there were about 1,400 applications to do maths at Cambridge. We made about 500 offers, 
and there were about 250 acceptances. So we make about twice as many offers as we have places, and we use STEP to work out who are those people who are going to um, get the most from our course. Um, those figures are rounded to two significant figures. Um, the typical offer, which you've probably heard of already, but I'm just going to reiterate it, uh, the typical offer for doing maths at Cambridge is A star, A star, A in your A levels, and a grade one, and a grade one in step two and step three. So as I've talked before, there are four grades in step, highest is um, grade S. There's also something called the flexible offer, and you've probably heard about this in the last talk, uh, which is you either meet the typical offer, or you get three A stars at A level and a one in either step two or step three. Okay, and those, not all colleges are offering that, so do a bit of research yourself on the website and find out which colleges do do that. A um, little bit about boundaries. Um, every year uh, I keep hearing um, that four questions are all you need to get a grade one. Um, this used to be the case many years ago. Nowadays, it's a little bit more variable. So each step question is marked out of 20. So the highest mark you can possibly get is 120. Uh, that is very, very, very rarely awarded. Um, I believe last year, actually 120 was awarded to one person, but it very, very rarely happens. So if you only attempt four questions, and you do those four questions absolutely perfectly and you don't drop a single mark, the maximum mark you can get is 80. And um, I'm hoping that you can see my pointer as I move it around. If you actually, uh, I'll just see if I can get an annotate tool, that might work a bit better. If you um, were doing step in 2017, then you'd have to get those um, four questions absolutely perfectly correct to guarantee your grade one. Um, there's a couple of other years where it gets a bit high. We've got a 77 over here and a 75 over here. Um, step three, the grade boundaries are a little bit lower. The four question um, rule tends to work a bit better there. Uh, but my advice would always be to do another couple of parts of questions as well. So maybe not try and complete six questions, but try and complete four and do another couple of bits, um, just so you've got a few extra marks. Uh, now I just need to work out how to actually clear my annotations. Um, nope, I don't know how to do this. Ah, here we go, clear. Perfect. Uh, now I need to actually get rid of annotations. There we go. Okay, so... These are quite hard maths exams. They're very different in style to anything you've done at A-level. Um, in A-level, you probably do about um, 10, 12 questions per paper in about two hours. Uh, for STEP, you're being asked to do six questions in three hours. So that's allowing about 30 minutes per question. They are much longer than A-level questions. Um, the best way you can possibly prepare for STEP is to practice questions. At the start, it's going to go very slowly. You're not going to be getting um, a step question out in half an hour. Um, as you keep practicing more and more step questions, it starts to get easier. So the first thing to do is practice, practice, and practice. Um, you can access past papers from the Cambridge Assessment Admissions Testing website. I will show you where you can find that in a bit. Um, I would probably save past papers towards the end of your preparation. I would do other things first. Um, Stephen Sikloss, who um, ran STEP for almost 40 years, um, wrote a book called Advanced Problems in Mathematics. It is freely available. And there's a link on the STEP support website for where you can go and find it. And it discusses lots of STEP problems and talks about some of the reasoning behind them um, why uh, some of these questions came to life. There's a nice discussion about um, a question about a chocolate orange um, and about how Stephen uh, wrote to the people who made chocolate oranges, hoping he would get some, and I don't think he ever did. Um, so that is a really good preparation, and lots of our students start, started their step journey by working through that book. And then there's also the step support programme, which I will show you a little bit about 
um, in a minute. Uh, what we have tried to do there is we've tried to start with very carefully selected step questions, which help to um, improve your confidence as you work through them slowly. Um, the first few step questions that we ask you technically only need GCSE work. They're still very hard, but you shouldn't uh, need anything from your A-level studies to actually do them. So we tried to make them very accessible. Um, step support programme. So I'm going to talk a little bit about this now. Um, I'm hoping that if I click this, I will take me to, um, a, uh, to the website so you can see. So fingers crossed. Just thinking about it. Um, I don't know. Can people see my... Um, can people see the website? Can anyone in question and answer tell me if they can see the website? I don't know. I'm going to leave that for now. I'll come to that back at the end. So in the um, Step Support Programme website, um, we have got what I call foundation modules. Um, those are about 25 modules, which sort of um, get you up to step one level. Um, they start off very gently. The first few only need GCSE maths, but they are still very hard. Um, they have a preparation leading into a step question. So what this does is it practices uh, some of the skills that you'll need to do to do, to do that particular step question. So it might be sketching a few graphs, or it might be um, looking at the discriminant of a quadratic equation. Um, we have hints and partial solutions. I say partial solutions, they are a bit fuller than um, the name suggests. So you can download those and then use those to see how you did on, on the assignment. Um, we also have some step two and step three modules. So these are specifically trying to prepare you for those particular exams. Now, each of those modules has got four step questions, which we've centered on a particular area of the specification. Uh, they also have topic notes. So because you will all learn um, topics in a different order, uh, we've tried to collect what you might need to do those questions onto one sheet of paper so that you can um, look at that, work out what you need to use, and apply that to the question. Um, we've separated hints and solutions. Uh, the idea behind that is that you try a question first, and then if you get stuck, you can have a look at the hints, and hopefully that will be enough to help you do the question. And then, even if you think you've got the question out completely, have a look through the solutions, because there might be some further um, hints and tips. And if you see a similar question, uh, sometimes I have said things like, well, the first thing I tried was this, and it all went completely wrong. Um, so then I sat back and I thought about it a bit, and then I realized what I'd done wrong. So trying to talk through the question, um, how I've done it, some of the mistakes I might have made, and some things that you can use to apply to similar questions. Um, how I suggest you use the Step Support Programme is now you are in Year 12, um, start in the foundation modules. Uh, they're designed to be done uh, approximately weekly. You don't need to keep to that. You can do them more quickly if you like. Um, I've had people telling me that the preparation makes the step question too easy. Um, if you're finding that that is the case, then don't do the preparation. Just do the step question. Uh, some people um, don't like spending times on the warm downs and the um, sorry, the warm downs and the warm ups, uh, which are question one and question four. Um, if you don't want to do those don't do them. You use these as you want to use them. Um, in October of year 13, so about the point when you are um, applying uh, for university, I would suggest you start looking at the step two modules. Um, there's two in particular which I think are really useful before interviews, and that's the step two graph sketching mod module, or curve sketching I think it's called, and the step two calculus module. So I would start on those two, and those two are at the top of the list of modules. Um, when you get to about February of year 13, um, hopefully after you've got your offer, uh, start working through the step three modules. Um, and then uh, just before, you know, about a month or so, or six weeks before the actual exam, start looking through some time papers. Um, every year I hear about some people who start doing time papers um, at the beginning of uh, January in year 13. 
I would be a bit careful about trying to do time papers too early. Um, there's two reasons for that. First of all, <laughs> if you um, are not at the stage where you can get six questions attempted in three hours, you're going to start to feel quite demoralized. Um, and secondly, when people are doing time papers, they tend to only look at six questions on the step paper. And it's best to look at all the questions to begin with so that you're not leaving out certain uh, topics and not practicing certain topics. Um, a couple of websites, and then I will uh, talk about the um, Step Support uh, Programme website a little bit more. Um, so first of all, the Step Support Programme website, uh, maths.org slash step. Uh, the next websites are all linked to on the uh, maths, uh, on the um, SEP Supports Programme website. Um, admissionstestingservice.org, that is the Cambridge Assessment Admissions Testing Service. Um, these are the people that actually run the uh, SEP papers. Um, if you go there, you'll find information on dates, um, you'll find all the past papers, um, you'll find mark schemes for 2015 to 2019, um, and you'll find other bits of information as well. Um, this link here, MEI, they've got handwritten step solutions for all the step papers from 1996. Um, this gives you a, another source of answers. Um, you also notice that some of the ways that uh, they have answered the question are different to the way that I've answered the question, but both are equally good. So it just gives you another source of solutions. Uh, the step database, um, this is something that has all the step questions uh, from the specimen questions from, I think, 1987 um, up to 2018. I don't think 2019 are on there yet. And it is a searchable database. So if you want to particularly look for step questions on vectors, um, you can search for vectors and it will pop up all the step questions from vectors. Um, if you want to search for step questions on penguins, you can type in penguins and then you'll find the one step question that has something about penguins. And it's quite a nice step question, so I, I would suggest that one. Um, so the last thing I want to do before I go on to um, questions, so it's just giving you a nice uh, question mark. We'll come back to that in a second. Um, I'm just going to stop share and then I'm going to try and share. Um, Nope, I cannot find it. Give me a second. I'm just going to get, um, I'd say talk amongst yourselves, but you probably can't at the moment. Just going to try and find a browser. Right, perfect. I'm going to refind Zoom. And then hopefully I'm going to be able to share. There we go. Um, so this is the step support website. Um, so if you look, if you type in maths.org slash step, or if you just search for the step support program, this is what you'll find. Um, you'll see recent tweets down the side. Oops. I don't know what I just did then. I apologize. For some reason, it seems to be a bit trigger happy. Right, hello again. Let's try that. Perhaps one more while time. you do that, I'll launch a poll. Oh, yes, that's a very good idea. Um, so there's going to be a poll as well for you to fill in. Um, so uh, Dr. Spivak is about to um, send that out. Uh, I can see it's just popped up. So do please feel free to fill that in uh, whilst I am just talking a bit about the website. So on the website, uh, we've got step support programs, um, step support modules, sorry. Uh, the first link are what we call the um, step foundation modules. Um, and these are the ones uh, which are designed to be started um, in year 12 um, and will give you uh, some fairly easy step questions to begin with or easier ones that don't need um, an awful lot of A-level knowledge. Uh, you'll see there's hints and partial solutions for each one here as well. Um, the step two and step three modules are slightly different. Um, here you've got questions, topic notes, hints and solutions, as I've said. Um, we've got a few additional resources. 
Um, so we've got video solutions uh, for the first three assignments. Uh, we are hoping to add some more of those at some point. Um, we've also got some information about the specifications. Um, so, not that's the wrong one. Specifications, no, there they are. So you can download the step specifications uh, from Cambridge Assessment Emissions Testing, um, or we've done a um, specification mapping document which tells you how the pre-2019 and the post-2019 uh, specifications are linked. Um, and we've also got a few notes um, on the areas of the specifications which aren't necessarily covered in A-level. Um, so for PURE, we've got a little bit about uh, proof, proof by induction, which isn't in A-level maths, but it is in the step one specification. Um, down here, we've got lots of useful links. So we've got a link to Stephen Sidcloth's book. Uh, we've got the link to MEI. Um, you'll notice that that one is purpled out because I think I've looked at that recently. Um, links to Cambridge Assessment, Cambridge Emissions Assessment, oh, Cambridge Assessment Emissions Testing, um, and also a link to the Advanced Maths Support Programme. So if your school can't offer further maths, we suggest that you contact the AMSP and see if they can help you. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing that one uh, now, um, and I'm going to go back to my um, go back to this one. So I've got my nice question mark, um, and now I'm going to open it up to questions. So I'm going to try and find the question and answers. Uh, okay. Um, I think we had one question, um, which was about. Uh, if you do a step question in a different way to what it shows in the um, mark scheme, is that okay? Uh, the broad answer is yes. Correct maths, which is done correctly and is explained correctly, will get the marks. Um, one example I use is, um, I've for many years I've been a, an A-level examiner um, and I used to mark uh, a module called C2 and would have people retaking it. And sometimes they'd use C4 methods to answer the C2 questions. As long as they did it correctly, it was fine. Um, they got the marks. Uh, when step is marked, um, the, the markers, when they come across different solutions, they will agree between them how these should be marked um, if they're not perfectly correct and how the marks should be allocated. Um, if the step mark schemes showed every single possible way of doing a question, um, they would just be far too long to produce. So normally we pick what we think was the way that most people would do it, um, and sometimes we're very, very wrong. Okay, um, I'm going to look at um, a few uh, more questions. Okay, uh, we've got, um, would a BMO paper be comparable to STEP, and um, is BMO useful for STEP? Um, Personally, I, I think the BMO papers, or certainly the paper two, are harder than STEP. Um, but when I was at university, I was much more of an applied mathematician than a pure mathematician. So that may affect my um, thinking on that one. Um, BMO is uh, normally tests a very specific sort of maths. Um, it normally goes quite into pure maths and number theory. Um, normally speaking, if you are good at BMO, you will be good at STEP. Um, so it's a sufficient condition, but it's not a necessary condition. Um, you might not uh, like BMO papers, you might never have seen a BMO paper, uh, but the questions on STEP, I would say, are more similar to A-level than BMO questions are. Um, uh, besides the set preparation materials in the website, does it help to try out different maths questions by reading mathematics competition books? Um, in terms of uh, STEP, the more, the more maths you do, the better. Um, I would say doing step questions is more helpful than doing mass competition books, but they both will be helpful to a certain amount. So yes, do mass competition um, things, but don't do them instead of step questions. Um, oops. Uh, what's the difference between mat and step? Um, there's two main differences. First of all, the uh, MAT test is based on a smaller um, subset of A-level and further maths. Uh, MAT is sat in um, very early November of year 13. At that point, um, some schools would have finished teaching the whole single A-level course, 
some schools would have finished teaching half of A-level and half of further maths. So math is basically only based on half of A-level maths. So it's got a much reduced um, specification to draw on. It also has um, some um, multiple choice questions, which STEP doesn't have. Um, I would say doing some map papers now uh, might help you get into the mindset for STEP. Um, the other thing about math is that uh, the way that Oxford um, do their emissions is they set a test first. They use that to reduce the number of people that they're going to interview, and then they use the interview to more or less make the final decisions. It will be based on um, you getting your A-level grades, but most people, once they've got an offer from Oxford, that's more or less done. With um, SEP and Cambridge, we interview first, then we use the interview to knock down the numbers, and we, then we use the test to decide who's actually going to get their place. Um, I've got a question about STEP 2020 um, and proctoring. Um, I suggest any questions about what's going to happen with STEP 2020, you're probably best to contact Cambridge Assessment Admissions Testing directly because they are going to be the people uh, running the exam. Um, I don't know, um, Alex, have you sent me any questions on Teams? Uh, can't see. I've got so many windows. That, no, I can't see. Uh, whatever questions we get. Um, somebody has said, um, is there any chance I'm going to be able to get into a Cambridge maths degree course um, with just AS level maths? Um, the Cambridge course says that you need to have a full A level in further maths um, to, to come and start the course. If your school doesn't offer full A-level maths, talk to the Advanced Math Support Programme. They should be able to, take, to, to help you. Every year we have students who have self-taught um, A-level further maths. And um, that, that is, it is, a, it is a very doable thing. So do look into that. Um, how do the examiners come up with the step questions? Um, that's, a, that's a very interesting uh, question. Uh, sometimes it's, it's things that they've seen um, or, or thought about. So if you look back over um, old step questions, you know, there's a step question, as I said, about a chocolate orange, uh, which was based on Stephen thinking about a chocolate orange and thinking what happens to it. Um, um, I've got another question, which is, oops, I've got so many windows open, I can't find them. Uh, if my school offers limited help for step, if I get stuck, would like hints, etc. who should I contact? Um, we have an email address. Um, I'm more than happy for people to send me emails um, if they get stuck. I would say start looking at Step Support Programme um, materials first. Uh, something else that lots of people do do is that they use um, something called the student room. Uh, that can be quite a supportive environment where if people are stuck, they might um, post something what they've done and some other members, some other students will come back and give you some suggestions. But I'm more than happy for people to email me if they have a problem. Um, is it important to be confident with mechanics and stats and stats step questions? And how many pure applied questions typical applicant? I haven't pronounced that at all well. Uh, essentially, somebody asked, um, do you need to do the mechanics and stats questions? Um, the answer is you don't have to. Um, most of the time, uh, or the majority of step candidates tend to do six pure questions. Um, you do get quite a few people who do attempt the mechanics and stats questions as well. And I'd always say, practice those. Um, you're in year 12 at the moment. You've got 12 months before the step papers. Practice uh, mechanics and stats questions now, just so that you are keeping your options open. Um, if you only look at pure questions, you might suddenly find that in the SEP um, exam, um, there's a vectors question that you don't like, and there's a complex numbers question that you don't like, and there's something else question you don't like, uh, and you haven't prepared mechanics or stats, so you can't look at those. Uh, mechanics or stats questions are also quite often um, pure questions in disguise. Uh, so there's not, sometimes not an awful lot of mechanics knowledge or stats knowledge that you need. So do have a look at them. Uh, right, a couple more questions. Um, 
what sort of support is there for a Welsh learner like myself who has to learn all the maths through the medium of Welsh and might struggle with the English terms? Um, we don't offer any specific support ourselves. Uh, in Wales, there's um, something called the Further Math Support Network. Um, so I would contact them. Um, they're very used to supporting people. Um, I know that they run an awful lot of um, Further Maths um, uh, lessons um, where people go to either Swans University or Aberystwyth University and do some further maths lessons there. So contact them, I would, um, and see what support they can give you. Um, are step exams taken at the same time? <coughs> excuse me. Are step exams taken at the same time um, worldwide? Um, I believe that there are a couple of different exam um, time slots. Uh, so most of the time, uh, most of the world does step at uh, 9 a.m. Uh, British summer time. Um, there's also a later sitting for people uh, in America. Um, again, that's probably a question that might be worthwhile pinging toward um, Cambridge's emissions assessment testing um, because they actually uh, deal with the time zones. Um, uh, another question, um, I, I'm self-studying further maths and I've never heard of the Mass Mathematics Support Programme. Can you tell us more about what they provide? Um, so if you're self-studying further maths, um, the in England, um, it's called the Advanced Math Support Programme. In Wales, it's a separate body called the Further Math Support Programme. Um, I'm not sure about Scotland. Um, I really ought to know that answer. Um, if you search, um, if you just do a Google search for them, you'll find some contact details. Um, they, some of them run online lessons to help teach uh, Further Maths. Um, some provide uh, problem work, problem solving workshops. So where you can um, go, go somewhere on a Saturday and work through some hard questions. Uh, but best thing to do is to contact them and see what you can uh, see what they say. Um, any more questions? Uh, can people get um, extra time? So step is like any other exam. Um, if you are getting extra time for your A levels, then you can. Um, get extra time for step and somewhere on the Cambridge assessment admissions testing website there is uh, more information about that um, I'm afraid I don't know exactly where it is off the top of my head um, if anybody has a specific question that I haven't answered you can email me at uh, step at mass.org and I will answer your question like that um, how important is neat visual arrangement of thinking on a step paper I tend to write my as my thoughts trail. Um, uh, so <laughs> we don't expect your step solutions to be beautifully neat. Uh, we are used to um, bits for step um, questions starting on one bit of paper and then moving somewhere else um, and then things linking back up to the top with arrows, um, stars and then later down a star and put insert here. This is all completely normal. The best thing to do is to make sure that um, whoever is marking your paper knows where your trail of thought is going. So if you do a great big arrow and put continues down here or perhaps um, continues after question four and make it very clear to an examiner where your thought is going, then that is absolutely fine. Um, Okay, I've had a question about uh, what is the name of the YouTube channel? I'm afraid I don't know that off the top of my head. Um, uh, do people take all three papers or are step two and step three sufficient? Um, Cambridge, uh, if you want to do maths at Cambridge, we only ask for step two and step three. Um, you do not have to do all three step papers. Uh, we do find that quite a few people do do all three step papers. Um, there's a couple of reasons why people do that. Uh, one is that they um, use step one as a warm-up paper. Um, and other reasons that people might do all three is they might be applying to Warwick. Um, and Warwick, for their reduced offer, uh, want a grade one in any of the three step papers. And because step one's a little bit easier, um, some people will take step one uh, if they've got Warwick as their insurance um, uh, place and then step two and step three for their Cambridge exam but we don't expect people to do all three uh, and we never will ask you to do all three um, why are the marks for each part of the question not shown in step questions um, 
essentially because it's quite hard until you've seen a whole load of answers to know exactly how the step how the marks should be allocated so it gives us a little bit more flexibility um, in in awarding the marks uh, with things like a level lots of the questions are just one mark or two marks um, and they are already set and if it suddenly turns out that one question um, turns out to, need to to actually be able to be answered very very quickly we can't then change the marks down or we can't change them up okay um, any more questions that um, I think I've got another uh, 10 minutes I'll just have a quick scan through um, is it worth taking step two and step three in AS level and can we take an A level again if we don't get good grades um, my advice normally on taking step early is um, don't do it um, even if you've covered all the material step sort of assumes a certain level of uh, mathematical um, uh, maturity I think is probably the best way of putting it um, if you are in in year 12 this year you will not be able to take step this year because of the uh, rather strange circumstances that we find ourselves in um, how hi, um, oh, hi. <clears throat> Hi, Alex. Sorry, sorry hi. Um, uh, I'm a current, <clears throat> sorry, I'm a current student at Cambridge, so I'm also answering questions here. Uh, I've seen a number of people ask questions about interviews and whether they'll be step-like. So interviews are run by the colleges independently from, from step, um, but the style of questions may well be similar just because that's the sort of question you will ask for uh, entry at university. Yes, we, um, with interviews, basically, they're trying to make you think in the interview, and step also is trying to make you think. Um, so one way of preparing for step for, for interviews is to work through some set questions. Um, it's also a good idea to actually work through the set questions uh, talking out loud. Um, so if you have, if there's a couple of you um, applying for interviews, you can try it out on each other. Um, if not, you can talk out loud to your teddy bear or anything but getting into the practice of actually talking whilst you're doing maths is really really important um, would the jump from a level to step be harder than the jump from step to maths at university um, i think that to a certain extent depends on you um, it was a long time ago for me personally i found the jump from a level to step bigger then the jump from step to uh, maths at university. Um, we have uh, somebody who's spoken on one of our panels um, several times before, who always likes to say, explain it like um, A level is uh, here. So my hands are disappearing and reappearing. A level is here, maths at university is here, and then step is the ramp that takes you up from one to the other. Um, is it common for people to struggle for time in the exam or does it make way for sufficient thinking time? So typically I'd say the step papers are actually, despite being three hours long, are actually quite rushed for time um, if you're trying to, as you should, aim for roughly six questions because they tend to be harder. Um, in my experience, when I did the step papers three years ago, I found that some questions I could get through a little bit faster, but some would be um, would take more than 30 minutes it's it's just a fine balance that you want to um achieve by trying to take past papers and seeing roughly how long uh, you'll have for every question and how you can make it fit in over doing six questions over one three-hour paper there's also a number of questions about how to choose um your step questions when you're in the exam <coughs> Again, once you've done uh, a few for practice, you know, after going through uh, the step support modules and after doing a few past papers, you'll start to recognize which questions um, will be in the vein of something you'd like to do. And when it gets to the exam, you'll be able to say, okay, well, this looks vaguely like something else I have seen that I may have been happy with, in which case you might want to do that. Um, I just want to answer a question that I've seen in the chat and have now have managed to lose, um, which was, which step two modules did I suggest for help in preparing with interview? Um, those were the curve sketching modules and the um, calculus module. 
Um, got another question here which says, do the step support notes cover the whole spec? Oh, somebody's already answered that one. Um, most of our notes do cover the whole spec and we also have extra notes which go into a bit more detail for any bits of the spec which aren't in A-level. Um, I'm just going to have a look, see if we can see any other questions. Are marks deducted for unnecessary stages in your working? Uh, now, I don't think so. Um, Claire is uh, shaking her head very vigorously. <laughs> so marks will not be deducted. Um, you, it's on the, it's a, a po marks will be given on a positive basis. So if you answer the relevant part of the question, you'll get marks for your work. If you do additional work, the marks will not be removed. Um, up to you, Claire. Uh, yeah, we've got another question here which says, um, do the step papers account for mass A levels from different exam boards? Um, in the, with the new A levels um, in 2019, A level maths is essentially the same content for all the boards. There's a certain amount of content that the um, DFE has said must be in there, and for, for maths, it's all exactly the same. Uh, for further maths, there's some content which the DF, DFE has said must be in your further maths exam, but then you can um, take other content uh, from other boards. Um, if you look at the step specifications, there are bits in bold italics. Those are bits which are not in the prescribed content from the DFE, um, but they might still be in your exam board, depending on which modules you do for further maths. Um, so we try and keep it as much as possible to the stuff that everybody has done um, with things like mechanics and stats in single mass A level, there's only a small amount that uh, is included. And for further maths, none of the mechanics and stats is in the DFE, must be in their content. So for mechanics and stats, is, uh, for step two and step three, it's all in bold and italics. But hopefully, if you've done some of those modules, you will find some of that stuff in there. Um, and also remember that there is choice. Um, so at least six questions on each of the step papers will be on stuff which is on the DFE, you must have done this content. If um, I don't do as well in my step exams, but have a good interview, will I still be considered for a place? Um, obviously, this, de de this depends on your college, because if they ask for a particular grade in step, that's what they've asked for. However, typically, uh, and this is not a promise, but typically, um, colleges ca can be quite lenient um, in terms of if they like you as a candidate, even if you don't quite make the step score, they will consider taking you on um, anyway. Uh, when, a quest when a step question says hence, will you get no marks if you use an alternative method? Um, I'm not actually sure about this. So Claire, if you could cover this one. Uh, yeah. If a question says hence and you don't use it, then the examiners have every right to give you no marks at all. Um, if there's a lot of marks, then what will probably happen is that um, a special ruling will be set up, which says that, OK, if you've done it this other way and you've shown some good marks, you might be able to get three marks out of the five. Um, if you've looked at any um, A-level exam papers, you'll see things like SR or SC, which means special case. So lots of students have done something which isn't what we expected. Um, it's not worth full marks, but we think it's worth some marks. Uh, but the, the best rule is always follow what the exam paper tells you. If it says hence, do it that way. Um, there's another question about um, exams and marks. Uh, and somebody said, is there a set framework for the distribution of the 20 marks? Or is it up to the examiners? Um, what tends to happen is when the exam, uh, exam papers are written, we think roughly how many marks we're expecting for the different parts. And then when marking starts, we have a, a group of markers that mark question one and a group of markers who mark question two. And they will look through some scripts and see how the mark scheme is working for that. Uh, that will then um, mean that they decide exactly how many marks there's going to be for each part. Um, as different um, solutions come in, uh, the, exam, the, the people marking question one might write up some new mark schemes for different ways of doing it. Um, and then if there's anything that they're not sure how the mark scheme should be applied, they talk to the marking supervisor. So there are more marking supervisors 
um, helping out whilst set marking is going on. Uh, and there's also a principal examiner for each paper. So essentially, if the marking supervisor can't decide how the marks should be divided in this case, they then boot it up to the principal examiner who makes the final decision. Um, I think we've got uh, 10 minutes left for this session. Um, so we'll just see if there's any more um, questions uh, to answer. And I'm starting to lose my voice. Um, There's one uh, question sorry, about I, Maybe I can chip in. Yeah, oh. Of course. There we go. Maybe I'm, am I visible as well? Yes. <laughs> Um, I saw some questions about um, what would happen if my schools um, have had limited support for STEP, uh, if I get stuck, like hence, who should I contact? Um, Claire, um, I mean, is, is it possible to post questions? Um, you, you gave an, an email before, is that a suitable email to... Yes, that, that's a suitable email. Um, so I've, I quite often um, answer questions uh, via that email. Um, mm -hmm. Most recently, I had an e email from somebody's dad who wants to know where the mark schemes were so that he could mark some of the papers that um, his son and daughter, <laughs> I can't remember which, was doing. And, and I'm more than happy to answer to any sort of questions like that. Um, there are several I, I also find actually of uh, um, students who talk to each other about. Um, questions step questions that are trying that they are trying to answer um that's one of the things we've um we did try and set up um it tended it actually didn't seem to work very well <laughs> um people didn't seem to be very keen on posting questions um when we asked people about that they were a bit worried about posting questions on a, a publicly visible website um, uh, but they'd rather, but they'd rather go and do it anonymously on the student room um so I, I do also um, float about on the student room as well. Um, and I will answer questions that appear there if I see them. Um, but the best thing to do is to email me and then I, I will answer. I've got another question that says, is six questions the maximum you can do or can you attempt more? Um, you can attempt as many as you like, uh, but we tend to discourage it. Um, one of the things I would say is if you have attempted seven questions, don't fear you have to cross one out. So if you've attempted seven questions, leave all seven questions in, and then your best six will be the ones that your mark is based on. I've uh, got another question here which says, um, should you focus revision in year 13 on A-levels or STEP? Um, I, I think you probably should do some of both. Um, you will find that your step probably helps you with your A-level mass revision, um, but you may find there are some A-level topics which aren't included in step. So if you are uh, taking a decision module or discrete module, um, step won't help you revise for that because we don't do it. Is the step support program uh, significantly easier than the step papers? So the idea is that the step support program should be an introduction into the step papers. And so they'll start off easier. And if I'm not mistaken, they'll also progress in difficulty as you, as you get through it. So if you, if you find the initial ones easy, um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't get too confident that step will be a breeze just because they're supposed to help you get into it there. Yes, very much so. So um, the, the foundation modules are intended for use in year 12 they are easier than you'd expect step papers to be. Um, we went through lots of step one questions and tried to find ones which are more approachable or ones we felt were more approachable. Um, so yes, and if you are finding it too easy, you can go on to the step two and step three modules. Um, you can start looking at papers. Essentially, you use the materials as you want to use them, as what is, is best for you. Why do different colleges have different requirements for the same subject? So this is not strictly about step uh, as is, but I think I'll cover it here anyway, just because it's, it's sort of a general question about Cambridge that a lot of people might have difficulty with. Because of the way the university works, the colleges are in many senses independent entities. So they have the freedom to choose um, what requirements they want to ask of, of the people they take in. Um, so that's why they might have slightly different 
um, entry requirements. On the other hand, overall, there is some homogeneity in terms of the, the general level um, that is required to do a maths degree because the courses and so on will be taken throughout the university. Um, yeah, I, I might, I should chip in there, I think. Um, yes, it can be confusing sometimes because there are different colleges uh, in Cambridge and they seem to be doing different things. Now, uh, I should stress the word seem, especially in mathematics, uh, we uh, have very good collaboration within all the colleges and between the colleges and the faculty. And basically we do exactly the same things with very slight uh, differences. We all look for the same qualities in candidates. We all um, ask for um, mathematics and further mathematics, normally A stars and a third subject. We all ask for one and one in step two and step three. Very slight differences very often actually depends on the contextual information about individual candidates rather than overall different policies by different colleges. So uh, we are actually working hard to make the information on uh, certainly on our website but also working with Cambridge um, uh, admissions office so that the information on the university prospectus reflects this uniformity better because certain things may be confusing to applicants. Rest assured that uh, all colleges basically do the same thing and certainly look for the same qualities in mathematicians. There's a question about um, how much money step costs to sit. Claire, could you just answer this one, please? Thank you. Um, yes. Uh... <laughs> Normally speaking, I think it costs about £55 per step paper. Um, there are different costs if you're overseas. So that's the, the, the costs for uh, UK-based students. Um, if your school um, doesn't support you sitting step, you may have to go to an uh, external centre, which may also charge you. Um, this year is a little bit different because um, there are added costs to running the step papers um, and the costs are a bit higher for home students this year. Um, I hope, does that answer the question? Yeah. Um, there was a, a question I've just seen and now I've lost again. Um, oh yes, if you have two attempts at a question, will they mark the best attempt or take the first one? Um, the way that uh, STEP works uh, nowadays is that if you have two attempts at the question, they will mark the one that is uh, most complete. Um, if they can't tell which one is most complete, then they'll mark the first one. But they try and work, try and work out which attempt was the one where you got the furthest. Um, this is very different to A-level exams. So the A-level exam board that I used to mark for, they always marked your last attempt even if it was just two lines compared to half a page, they would always mark your last attempt. But with STEP, it's a little bit more lenient. We know that you're going to make lots of attempts at these questions, um, and we'll try and work out which one you got furthest on. Um, so Is there any support available if you cannot afford to take STEP papers? Uh, just the last question that we can do. Claire? Um, there is no official support available. Um, what I would suggest is if, if you have an offer from a college, um, contacting your college and seeing if they can help you. Um, some schools will, will offer to, to pay for the exams, uh, some schools won't. Um, but yeah, try, try contacting your college and see if there's anything that they can do. Okay, maybe we should wrap it up there. Mm -hmm. And apologies for not being able to answer all the questions that have come in. We will answer. Apologies also, um, another student who, who was supposed to be there, uh, she, she wasn't able to make it. So that is also part of the reason we've been struggling. But uh, everything will be answered. Some questions are very similar. We'll put everything online in some kind of frequently asked questions page. Yep. Okay, well, um, thank you very much, everybody, for coming. Um, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the afternoon. And goodbye. Bye-bye.